Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our financial statements. We've prepared them all, but now we want to do a bit of analysis, rudimentary analysis, just to get a feel for how this company did and, and just to make sure we understand what we've in fact done. We prepared an income statement. That was our summary of revenues and expenses. Revenues minus expenses equals net income. It's interesting to note I got messier as I went here. Uh, next, we did our statement of retained earnings. A little bit sloppier. That summarizes the way retained earnings uh, changes throughout the year and uh, the increase in retained earnings uh, in this case. And finally, we prepared a balance sheet. And this is, I apologize for the mess, but I think we made our point here. It summarized our assets, our liabilities, and our shareholders' equity. And it, it, it confirmed that assets equals liabilities plus shareholders' equity. And you can see at the bottom line, total assets of 154 equals total liabilities and shareholders' equity of 154. Now, again, if your instructor is a stickler for formatting, you're going to have to write out all the words and uh, there might be some odds and ends that are different, but the big picture stuff uh, should be the same uh, regardless of, of who your instructor is. Um, okay, let's do a bit of analysis. So again, the income statement tells us, did we make any money? And the answer is, yeah, this company made 59 grand this year. This is the first place I look when I look at financial statements. Now you might say, oh, 59 grand, that's great. Well, we don't know if it's great. The only thing we know is they made $59,000 this year. It's very unusual if you're analyzing a company and figuring out how they did to look at only one year. If uh, my company makes 59 grand in a year, that's a great thing. If Microsoft makes $59,000 this year, people are going to be jumping out of buildings on Wall Street. That's such a terrible year. They make in the billions. If they made only $59,000, what a disaster. So it depends on the company, and it depends on the trend that the company's been on over time. Uh, that said, all we can say about this company is it was a profitable year. They didn't lose money. Retain, statement of retained earnings shows how retained earnings changed. We started with 104 grand. We earned 59 grand, so we had up to 163,000 in retained earnings. But we gave out 43,000 dollars in dividends. Again, dividends are not a bad thing. They make our retained earnings go down, but they're not a bad thing. The final statement is the balance sheet. It summarizes assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. Uh, and summarizes the financial position of the company. So, uh, one way of analyzing a company, oh, actually before I do that, uh, I noted as I prepared them, the dating. And I said, oh, well, you know, the income statement is for the year ended, the statement of retained earnings is for the year ended, and the balance sheet is as at. And I didn't really explain why at the time, and I'd like to explain why now. Uh, the reason, uh, I'll, I'll explain maybe by way of example. Again, let's look at the income statement versus the balance sheet. The income statement says how much money we earned. Now, if I ask you how much money did you earn, well, it's a rude question to ask, but you kind of have to say when. How much money did I earn yesterday? How much money did I earn last week? How much money did I earn last year? They're very different numbers. I might have made uh, $1,000 last month or $12,000 last year. So when I ask how much money did you earn, you have to kind of give me a time period. Was it a week? Was it a month? Was it a year? Same thing here. So we're saying this is how much money Fred Stelling earned for the year, for that time period. Now if I said, uh, excuse me sir or ma'am, how much cash did you have for the year? You'd say kind of like what? You know, I have cash that went up on January 1st and down on the 2nd and up on the 3rd. You know, your cash goes up and down over time. So when I ask you how much cash you have, again, a, a rude question to ask a person, but not a rude question to ask a corporation if you're their shareholder. If I ask the corporation how much cash they had, they can't say, oh, this is how much cash we had for the year. We're going to say this is how much cash we had at our year end date. That's what's a relevant amount. So again, it makes sense to say how much money did you earn for the year. It makes sense to say how much cash did you have on a specific date. So balance sheet items are all on a specific date. Income statement items are all for year or for the month or for a, a specific time period. So that's why we date the statements in the way that we do. Uh, a final note before I get on to the last uh, question here. 
um, was just how the statements work together. There's a reason we do the income statement first, the statement of retained earnings second, and the balance sheet last. We do the income statement first uh, because we use net income. Now remember, net income is the bottom line of our income statement. We can't prepare a statement of retained earnings if we don't have our net income. So again, the net income moves from our income statement to our statement of retained earnings. Then we go on and our balance sheet is the last financial statement we do. We can't do the balance sheet if we don't have the retained earnings from our statement of retained earnings. So you can see it's 120 grand on the balance sheet and there it is, the bottom line of the statement of retained earnings. So again, we use net income from our income statement to prepare our statement of retained earnings. We use our ending retained earnings from our statement of retained earnings to prepare our balance sheet. That's how the financial statements link together and that's why we prepare them in the order that we prepare them. Okay, let's go back to the question and make sure we've answered it. It says required. Prepare the company's income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheet. Done. We've done it and we've done well. Next, calculate the company's current ratio, debt ratio, and equity ratio. These are all things used to analyze companies, ratio analysis, and you'll certainly be doing this in any of your, your accounting classes, and uh, these are the first ratios somebody has to learn. Uh, and a ratio is just typically one number divided by an, um, another number, or some mathematical formula we do on the financial statements to see how the company's doing. So let's do the company's current ratio. All of these ratios happen to use the balance sheet. I'm going to do them in a red pen on the side. So let's see if I can make it fit. Current ratio equals current assets divided by current liabilities. So this company's current assets we've totaled as 135. I'll just put a K there for 1,000. Current liabilities, just four. This is going to be a huge number. I'll actually do this in Excel. I, I haven't prepared this in advance. Uh, so equals 135, oh, 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 divided by four, oh, oh. When you run the number, and when I've run this number, I get 135 divided by 4 equals 33.75. Now, a couple of rule of thumbs here, rules of thumb, is 1.5 is thought of as a pretty magic number. If it's over 1.5, the company's safe. Less than 1.5 might be a little risky. 33.75 is very high. This company's very safe. Let's think about what this uh, uh, ratio is, is analyzing. Current assets divided by current liabilities. Current assets are all of our short-term assets, and current liabilities are those debts that are coming due within the next year. So basically, and I should make sure I'm dividing by 4K, basically what we're saying here is, do we have enough assets to pay our bills? Do I have enough money right now to pay the bills that are going to come due. And the rule of thumb is I need to have one and a half times the current assets at the ready to pay off any of the current liabilities that are coming due. This company is 33.75 times and you can see they have way more than enough cash to pay off all their bills. They're in a very comfortable, very safe financial position. Some companies, some investors would argue that it's way too high. This company's playing it way too safe. But that's that's fine. We've calculated our current current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities. Next is our debt ratio. And debt ratio is total liabilities divided by total assets. And debt ratio is generally going to be a percentage. So our company's total liabilities here was while it was four, it was the same as our current liabilities, and our total assets is 154. Again, I'm going to have to calculate this in Excel here. It equals four over 154. It's 0 0.026. Uh, so let me just grab the pen. Equals 0 0.026 or 2.6%. So what this tells us is the percentage of the company that's owned by our creditors. So if I were to take all of my assets and pay off all of my liabilities, it would take 2.6% of my assets to pay my liabilities. Put differently is the equity ratio. 
and the equity ratio looks at the other side of it. So what the equity ratio says is let's look at total equity or total shareholders equity divided by total assets. Our total shareholders equity is 150 divided by our total assets which is 154. Sorry my writing deteriorates as the question goes on uh, and what you're going to find there is a ratio of 0.974 or 97.4 percent. And the math there is, okay, well we've just said that our creditors own 2.6 percent of the company. The rest has to be owned by the shareholders. So the shareholders own 97 percent of the company. In terms of a debt ratio analysis, I would say lower is safer and 2.6% is extremely safe as our current ratio suggested. An equity ratio higher is safer, not necessarily better, just safer and it speaks to how much the company wants to borrow and how highly leveraged they are. But this company is not borrowing a lot, they're not highly leveraged. This company has a 97.4% equity ratio. They are a very safe conservative company. All right, so we've done a bit of financial statement analysis. We've done financial statement preparation. Uh, I hope that you're more comfortable looking at and using financial statements. Uh, future videos, I might get into some more complex versions of financial statements, but this should be a good uh, foot in the door. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know. Uh, feel free to comment and uh, thumbs up the video if you like them. All right, take care.